Self-driving cars in Atlanta, it's not the future, it's right now. Autonomous vehicles are already on roads here in the city. Uh, whether you're gonna hop in one or not is your choice, but if you're gonna be driving, you're certainly gonna be sharing the road with one. Love and Live consumer investigator Liza Lucas is tracking the rollout. And Liza, you've been, uh, if you've been in Buckhead, Midtown lately, you've probably seen these cars already. Uh, what do drivers need to know about this? Good morning, Chesley. I know you've seen them around the station. They're certainly active over here, particularly when we talk about Waymo, right? And Waymo is already taking in those early riders here in Atlanta with plans to fully launch to the public this summer in partnership with Uber. But here's the difference here, the key difference. These ride shares do not have drivers, not even safety operators as some companies have had during rollouts. And that means Atlanta drivers are now navigating alongside fully autonomous cars in real traffic, real weather, real chaos as we know. Here we are in Atlanta. Now the question is, are we ready for that? So I took that question to Georgia Tech's Dr. Serena Vespita, who studies exactly how drivers and AI systems interact on the road. Take a listen. We primarily are interested in how humans interact with uh, changes that are taking place uh, because they're used to driving by themselves. So for the past, uh, I would say century, we have been used to humans being in control of the driving and now they have to cede control to uh, machines. And so that transition is part of uh, where we need to understand how we can do that harmoniously. So Dr. Pita and I talked quite a bit a lot about this and he says Atlanta's driving culture could create some real test for the autonomous vehicles from aggressive merges to unpredictable weather. You know, we've got those afternoon thunderstorms you tell us about all the time. And of course, gridlock. His lab is going to be watching closely to see how these drivers and AVs adjust each other on the road, Chesley. Yeah, you talk about uh, weather. I'm thinking about snow and ice right? when we get to that point, right? But yeah, I got we, a point about that. <laughs> we're still a little bit further away from that. Uh, so this really, does this really change how drivers approach uh, driving every day in traffic? Well, it does because harken back to the days of you first got behind the wheel and you learn certain rules. You may have kind of veered off for some of those rules since then, right, Chesley? But these autonomous vehicles, they are also learning the same rules. For instance, keeping a dedicated distance between cars in traffic. So while we might adjust if we're in gridlock or kind of merging on certain parts of the interstate, these vehicles are designed to still keep that safe distance in mind. So we could see some tension there or maybe even some bullying from <laughs> aggressive drivers. We're just going to have to watch and wait and see as people out there on the road get more comfortable here in Atlanta. But that's one thing Dr. Pita and his team are going to be watching. So we're looking at a learning curve, right? Exactly, exactly. And really time's going to tell. Uh, Dr. Pita had a great metaphor. He compared it to think about when we first had planes in the sky, how new that technology was. That's really the frontier we're looking at now. And he suspects by all intensive purposes that people are really going to adjust to this, whether you're choosing to ride in these autonomous ride shares or you're navigating with them on the road. He thinks time will continue to, uh, will all continue to evolve and learn together. Yeah, I think one of the problems will be just looking at it. Like you're driving down a road, you just want to look at it. Oh you know? yeah, for sure. Have I've heard, seen them a million times and do that. <laughs> have you ever heard of anything directly from uh, Waymo uh, about how they're preparing to roll it out in Atlanta? Yeah, we've been talking back and forth about this. I know that the company has been in touch with uh, DOT quite a bit and will continue to be in touch with public safety officials, also firefighters and other types of first responders, police so they know how to respond to the vehicles as well. Actually, APD had a social post about how they were getting trained on this too. So we're in communication and of course we'll be watching that public rollout. I talked to another early rider as well who had great things to say about the technology and her particular ride. She was really excited to be on the cusp of that. And Dr. Peter says some people are going to be head first, ready to jump in and test this new technology. Some people may wait and see for a while and then some are probably going to need some convincing. All right, last question, Liza. Would you take a ride in one? I actually have. I took oh, one in Arizona, oh, um, wow. which was a lot slower moving than Atlanta. <laughs> so I still have a little bit of reluctance. I'm not going to be getting on the interstate in one anytime soon, but I hope to do have a ride along. Very good. Very yeah. good. Thanks a lot, Liza. Appreciate it. You can watch Liza's full story tonight on 11 Live News at 6 and right here on 11 Live Plus. And if you have a tip that you want us to investigate, our team will investigate it for you. you you can call Liza at 404-873-9111. Again, it's 404-873-9111. Or email her at investigates at 11alive.com.